this quick brief is on rain rate that is derived from microwave instruments on polar orbiting satellites. I'm Scott Lindstrom from SIMS. Satellite estimates of rainfall are important because radar data and surface rain gauges that measure rain are sparse. Microwave energy easily penetrates clouds on its way up to the satellite to be detected, and it is modulated by rain. Rain rate is computed for every polar orbit pass, even though microwave instrumentation varies from satellite to satellite. Here's a VIRS infrared image from SIMI NPP, showing 11.45 micrometer data. Where's the heavy rain? Can you tell from this infrared image? Can you tell from the infrared imagery where the heavy rain is? It's hard to do that. Coldest cloud tops might not be associated with any precipitation, for example. Here's the microwave rain rate for the same time. A long swath of heavy rain is impinging on southeast Alaska. It spreads a short distance inland. Lighter rain is over far northwest Canada and over east central Alaska. If you toggle between this image and the previous one, you'll note that the microwave data swath is a bit more narrow than the infrared swath from VIRS. Later in the day, radar shows rain continuing, but the radar has range limits and beam blocking that can limit its usefulness in describing the extent of the precipitation. Microwave rain rate can fill in the gaps. Different satellites have different microwave detectors and they have different resolutions. Additionally, the resolution can change across the swath by varying degrees that depend on the instrument and on how it scans. See the links later in this training and that will help you understand that. Better resolution means rain rate is more likely to detect extreme rain rates that are small scale. Radar has better resolution than rain rate. Keep that in mind when comparing the two products. The Microwave Integrated Retrieval System was created so that microwave products created by different satellites that host different instruments, as listed on this slide, could be compared. Care has been taken to remove bias between instruments. The direct broadcast software creates values for AWIPS using the MIRS algorithm. As of late 2018, answer to rain rate values from GCOM are not yet available via the direct broadcast. Here are some things to keep in mind. Rain rate works because the emissivity of rain is higher than the emissivity of seawater. Thus rain will cause a warmer brightness temperature over a mostly uniform cold ocean surface. Land surface, in contrast, has higher emissivity, and it can change from day to day. It's not so simple to create rain rate over land, but it's done. It's even harder to compute rain rate over snow. Some algorithms do attempt to do this, but as of late 2018, the MIRS algorithm does not compute rain rate over a frozen surface. The previous slides have used data over Alaska. There, direct broadcast antenna can process rain rate for the many polar passes that are available, and the data can flow quickly into AWIPS. Over CONUS, rain rate is also available via the SBN. It's under the satellite menu under pose imagery, then derived product imagery and blended rain rate. What is blended here? The many different polar orbiters. As with data over Alaska, different orbits are plotted, and they remain in place until overwritten by subsequent later passes. Unlike in Alaska, the data can take some time to get into AWIPS, as much as two plus hours. You might find that the default enhancement for your AWIPS with this product is a bit gray. There's not enough contrast between levels. But Meltic data updates every hour with stationary values in between updates. If you know when polar satellites overfly you, however, you can start to anticipate when the data will be available for you. It's a simple matter to change the enhancement to something useful, however, maybe in a procedure that does this automatically when the data are loaded. Here we have the same data as on the last page, but with a different enhancement, available as a CMAP file at the link, that has breaks at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, and 2 inches. This information can yield clues, especially for coastal regions, on how heavy is the rain that is approaching out of radar view. Again, there is a challenge of latency. It can take up to two hours for the data to appear in AWIPS. Here are some closing thoughts on microwave rain rate. 
read them over and understand why they're here. This concludes the quick brief. Thanks for listening.